Hello, hello, hello. This is Prophetess Tay Janice. I'm here with another prophetic word from the Lord thy God. Before anything, you must seek the Lord by using your discernment spirit. You must also discern the voice of God by testing. You may discern what the will of God is for you to be sure this prophecy is indeed for you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in right now with thanksgiving in our hearts. God, I ask and pray that it be none of me and all of you. Father God, I ask that you have your way. Touch each and every person that's watching this video. Father, you know what they stand in the need of. God, I ask right now that you begin to pour out your blessings, God. Fall fresh like the rain. Blow like the wind inside of their lives right now, Father God. God, wrap your arms around each and every person right now. God, we know that your arms are not too short to where you can't reach them. And we know that your ears are not too dull to where you can't hear them when they pray. God, you hear them when they cry out to you, when they pray to you, Father God. God, I ask right now that you silence the voice of every single Goliath that's speaking negative right now. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So the title of this message is, Your Kingdom Spouse Had a Handcuff Moment. Yes, your kingdom spouse had a handcuff moment. And this message may not be for everybody, maybe for one or two people. You want to make sure that you take this message back to the Lord in prayer. You know, God has been specifically, you know, speaking to a group of people with this message. And you're going to know that this message is for you because the Lord has been speaking with you about this matter, right? Um, and if he has not, then this message is not for you. But you want to make sure you take every prophetic word, every message back to the Lord in prayer. So your kingdom spouse had a moment to where they had to, you know, ask themselves, like, what am I thinking? What am I doing? How did I get in this place? Right? Like, how did all of this happen? And the enemy is so creative. He is so busy. The enemy wants to keep you or your kingdom spouse in bondage inside of your mind so you don't have time to you know think about the things that are important when you don't have time to meditate on the word of god when you don't have time to pray so the enemy wants to keep your mind in bondage because the first thing that the enemy attacks on a man is his mind and the first thing that he attacks on a woman is their body and the first thing that he attacks on the child is their mouth so for your kingdom spouse the enemy wants to keep him or her in bondage in their mind to where they don't have a chance to focus on the things that are in front of them. So the decisions that they have been making, right, has been holding them captive. And the Lord wants you to pray for your kingdom spouse. It tells us in the scripture, in the book of James chapter 5, beginning at the 16th verse, and you guys know that I'm in the easy version, you know, it says to us, so... You should tell each other about any wrong things that you have done. Then you will be able to pray for each other so that God makes you well again. When a good person prays to God, God does powerful things. So the Lord wants you to be in a place to where, you know, you pray for your kingdom spouse because, you know, they're in a handcuff moment. They're in a handcuff moment thinking, you know, what have I done? You know, what am I doing here? How did I get in this place? Because... You know this is not where i'm supposed to be at and that's where the enemy wants your kingdom spouse he wants his mind or he wants her mind to be and bondage to where they don't have time to think about the things or set their minds on the things of christ and the lord is actually having them to think about you know the decisions and the choices that they've made because you know the lord wants them to surrender to his will God wants his kingdom to come so that his will can be done. And the Lord wants us to surrender to his will. Our life is not our own. To the Lord, we belong. So we have to, you know, consistently give ourselves away to the Lord so that he can use us. I heard that song, I give myself, I give myself away so that you can use me. And that's what the Lord wants your kingdom spouse to do. You know, surrender to their will and focus on the will of God. And your kingdom spouse is now asking the questions because, it's, it's feeling like isolation to them at this moment because this is the Lord working on them. But the enemy has had them trapped in their mind to where they can't have time to think about the things of the Lord. But God has turned the situation around to where whatever the enemy meant for their bad, God had to turn it around for their good. It's like the, it's like your kingdom spouse just had a wake-up call. They had a wake-up call to know that, hey... This is not the plans that God has for me. His plans are to prosper. That's what Jeremiah 29 and 11 tells us, right? God knows the plans that he has for your kingdom spouse to prosper. And, you know, the Lord is not 
taking anything off of the king of spouses. He's just not, right? He wants you to be in an alignment. If he sees that you're not going the way that he's asking you to go, you know, his arms are not too short to where he can't reach out and grab you and bring you back in. His ears are not too dull to where he can't hear you when you pray. He wants to use you. He wants to use the both of you for his glory. It's not just about you. It's about his glory being done, his will being you know, played out the way that he's already orchestrated this thing to happen. And if he sees that, you know, you or your kingdom spouse is not going the right way, he's going to pull you back in because he promised that he will never leave you nor forsaken you. And he chastised those who he loved. And this is not punishment. This is not something that's punishment. But the Lord is giving your kingdom spouse time to sit back and think about the decisions that they have been making, right? Because they were not raised that way. They were not brought up that way. They were not trained that way. So the Lord will pull you back in and put you in isolation to, to, to where he will deal with you, you know, accordingly, accordingly to his will, his purpose, his glory, because he wants the best for you because he sees the best in you. Even when everyone else around can only see the worst, you're his, he's yours. And it doesn't matter what you did. God only see you just for who you are. And because of that purpose and that reason, man looks at the outer, God judges the heart. So the Lord knows the heart of your kingdom spouse. Who am I talking to? It may have been feeling like isolation for your kingdom spouse, but it has because the Lord had to sit them down and make them think about this. Think about the decisions that they have been making. So the next scripture that the Lord has given to me to give to you is coming from the book of Hebrews chapter 3, beginning at the 15th verse. It says, we have seen what the Bible says. You must listen when you hear God speak today. Do not refuse to obey him. Do not be like God's people many years ago when they turned against God. So the Lord does not want your kingdom spouse to be like that. The Lord wants your kingdom spouse to, you know, have their heart in a place to where they're ready to receive. And the Lord is just like, you know, hey, I'm always pouring, but are you in position to catch what I am pouring? And if you're not in a position, we have a God that loves us so much that he'll pull us back in and make us have a reality check on the way that we've been acting, on the way that we've been doing things, and the way that we have been going about things. Because whatever it is that you're thinking, that's what you're going to become. So you have to change your mindset. You have to change your thought process. And that's what the Lord is allowing your kingdom spouse to do, to sit back and take a moment and reflect on his will. His will for us is to be in an alignment and to trust and obey what the word of God is saying. That's what he wants us to do, you know, at the end of the day. So, you know, think about the way that you've been acting. If the way that you've been acting is not in an alignment with the will of God, right? And if you've been being lazy, because a lot of your kingdom spouses have been lazy. A lot of them have not, have been just careless to where they're just reckless to where they're just doing things the way that they want to do things. And that's just not the way it's supposed to be. They have not been treating some of you correctly. They have not been moving the way that God wants them to move. And you're not taking that, right? You're not falling for those things you're wanting your kingdom spouse to come correct and so does the lord so he's putting them in a handcuff moment to where they're thinking about the things that they have been doing so the name of this song is called how do i breathe by mario it says it feels so different being here i was so used to being next to you life for me is not the same there's no one to turn to i don't know why i let it go too far starting over is so hard Seems like everywhere I try to go, I keep thinking of you. So it's different being in this place of isolation. It's different being in a place to where they can't hear from nobody but God because God has moved every single distraction out of the way. And the Lord is making them think about their actions and their behavior. And now they're realizing that, hey, I'm so used to being here next to you. I'm so used to this. And now that privilege has been taken away from me because of the way that they were acting. And they know that they were not doing things the right way. They know that they were not in alignment with the will of God. God told them to do things, go right. And they went left when he told them to go right. So the Lord, you know, had to sit your kingdom spouse down. So he said, life is life for me. It's not the same. It's not the same. 
it's completely different because the Lord has came in and he stepped in and he's taken over. And this is how it's supposed to be. And it says, there is no one to turn to. I don't know why I let it go too far. At that time, they had you to be able to turn to. At the time, you know, they had you to be able to talk to. But they were, you know, abusing that 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 time, that, that privilege that they had with you. They had a chance and an opportunity to do what they were supposed to do. And it's like, you're not taking, you know, the breadcrumbs. You're not taking it. You had Some of you had to pull things out of your kingdom spouse to know what they're thinking about, what they're talking about, to try to pull things out, to find out what's wrong. A lot of you have been trying to motivate them and to, you know, help them find a job, help them find a career, help them get themselves together. And it's like they were not budging. They were just living any kind of way, doing whatever it was that they wanted to do. And now, you know, they had a wake-up call because God had to put them in a handcuff moment because that's what the Lord will do. And it says, I just had a wake-up call wishing that I never let you fall. Baby, you are not to blame at all when I'm the one that pushed you away. Baby, if you knew I cared, you never went nowhere. Girl, I should have been right there. So they wish that they would have never let this relationship fall, let this marriage fall, you know, let things get off track the way that it did, right? They wish that they would have done what the Lord had asked of them to do, what you kept telling them to do that the Lord had gave to you. And they know that they're the ones that pushed you away. They pushed you to this place to where you had to let go. For a lot of you, you had to let go and it hurted you to let go. But now that you have let go, although you let go, you let go so that God can do what he needed to do inside of your kingdom spouse's heart, inside of your kingdom spouse's mind. Because, you know, the Lord had to do surgery on your kingdom spouse's heart, right? He had to, he's the manufacturer, he's the creator. If there's anything that's wrong, what better hands for them to be in other than the Lord's? They're in the safest hands you know, possible, right? The Lord knows how to operate in his jurisdiction. The Lord knows how to operate, you know, on your kingdom spouse. There's nobody else that can do this thing but the Lord. But because you've been praying for this person, you know, and lifting them up, you know, the Lord draw them back in. It was because of your prayers. It was because of what you talked to the Lord about. So now the Lord is making a move because you're speaking those things that are not as though they are. So now God is dealing with your kingdom spouse. Who am I talking to today? They knew that they messed up to the point to where they are worried. They're worried that you have moved on. They are worried that you know, you're not going to wait for them. They are worried that they really lost a good thing because, you know, when you're in handcuff moment, when you're in isolation season, you know, no one else is able to get in other than the Lord himself. So they have to take this time to spend time with the Lord and they don't know what to think because they can't reach you. They can't talk to you. A lot of you guys are not in contact. And, you know, this is what the Lord wants because the Lord wants them to, you know, unharden their heart and come to their senses right and have some time to think about what am i doing how did i get here and start asking those questions because again the enemy wants or wanted your keynote spouse to be in a place to where they cannot think to where they're so distracted to where they're just making any old type of move and living any old kind of way and the lord is just like no so he had to give them this wake-up call i had to put them in a handcuff moment they realized that they made this mistake state because now you know a lot of times you don't even realize what you've done wrong until you no longer have access to that very thing you don't realize that you made this mistake so the lord had to sit them down and make them realize what they did wrong where they went wrong you know so that they can be able to get it right because the lord would make the road straight a straight and narrow path he would make every cricket place in your life straight you're not hung up on the mistakes that this person has made you're just happy right now that the Lord is having his way. That's all you've ever wanted was for this situation to be fixed because you want to live out the will of God. And who else better to fix it? Who else better to heal it but the Lord? Mark 9 and 23, anything is possible to those who believe. If you believe that God can heal your relationship, then this message is also for you. If you believe that God can heal your marriage, then this word is also for you. But the Lord had to put your kingdom spouse in a handcuff moment to make them sit down and think about their behavior, how they have been acting. They were not raised that way. They were not brought up that way. You know, they have to be in an alignment with the will of 
God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to the throne of grace. Spirit of the living God, we come to you as humble as we know how with thanksgiving in our hearts. Father, we pause to tell you that we thank you, that we love you, and that we adore you. God, I ask and pray that you deliver us from making poor choices and bad decisions. God, I ask and pray right now that you help us to continue to look towards the hill, knowing all of our help comes from you, Father Jesus. God, your word says, how can two walk together unless they agree? God, I ask right now that you begin to have your way right now. In Jesus' name, God, we ask and pray that you silence the voice of every single Goliath that's speaking negative against your word your will and your way in Jesus name I pray amen amen if you are new here welcome shalom in the Lord many peace in the Lord don't forget to like share and subscribe as the Lord downloads to me I'm going to upload to you what the Lord gives to me to give to you amen guys thank you so much for your prayers for your support for your super thanks amen Amen. Continue to sow into this ministry as the Lord lays it on your heart. If you need a prayer request, that's fine. If you're feeling as though God is calling you to tithe into this ministry, go ahead and do so. Obedience is better than the sacrifice, and sometimes the sacrifice is the obedience. I love each and every one of you with the love of Christ, and I don't mind praying for you guys as long as the Lord can get the glory. I'm doing emails only, so how to sow will be in the description box below. I'll open up different outlets so that you can sow. I think that's many of you concerns. You want to sow different ways. That's fine. Glory be to God. I thank the Lord for you. Again, I love you. And guess what? There's nothing you can do about it.